Welcome and thank you so much. I'm Kylie Timler with Kirkwood Corporate Training. Today we have Lisa Schaefer with Shine the Schaefer joining us to present a preview of her flexible and innovative training uh, session called Love Them or Lose Them, or excuse me, Love Them or Lose Them, Engaging, Motivating, and Retaining Key Employees. This presentation in its entirety will be on Thursday, December 9th from 8 a.m. to noon, and it's offered in person only. Um, after today's presentation, if you'd like to learn more about how to attend Lisa's session or any other session or bring Lisa in-house to do some training for your company, please give us a call at Corporate Training at 319-398-5623, or you can always email us at corporatetraining at kirkwood.edu. Uh, for the past 25 years, Lisa has been engaging audience with leadership and laughter. As a certified John Maxwell speaker and coach, Lisa teaches the importance of trust and influence in leadership. She is passionate about creating cultures and organization that help people shine. Lisa helps individuals and companies create strategic action plans that focus on the following. Strengths, heart, ideas, networking, and empower. Because of her background in counseling, she's able to reduce uh, conflict and defense mechanisms and encourage trust and team building in the organization she serves. Lisa has a very impressive background as a mental health first aid trainer, um, works as a community licensed, or excuse me, a community counseling uh, counselor, excuse me, and she has worked in academia and with companies and lots of other really fantastic things within that line of work. Again, I wanna thank you all for joining us throughout today's presentation. Please go ahead and ask your questions um, or just say hello. We are so glad to have you. And I just wanna remind you that we really encourage those questions. Today's session is all about you guys and we want you guys to get the most out of it. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us and whenever you're ready, please feel free to Great, thanks so much, Kylie. Uh, excited to be here and thank you so much for the opportunity to showcase what we'll be talking about on December 9th. It's a topic that I think a lot of people are passionate about right now. And this is the idea of how do I retain staff? Because right now retention is becoming key because it seems like we're all kind of fighting for the same people. And it does take time to really look at how are we retaining people? What are some strategies that are working? And what ultimately is something that we can continue to do. As we talk through today, I really want us to focus on one of the biggest things we're seeing in retention is creating a culture of psychological safety. Because we've gone through such a huge pandemic trauma over the last 20 months or what we consider a major disruption in many of our businesses, it's becoming imperative to create a culture where people feel as though they can speak up, share concerns, make mistakes if necessary, hold themselves and each other accountable without the fear of punishment or humiliation. And so one of the biggest things we'll talk about on December 9th is what are we currently doing to create psychological safety? How many of you are acting and engaging your team with pulse surveys just to find out what are their fears, what are their concerns, what are their needs, what are their wants? How many of you are establishing one-on-ones where you're taking opportunities to talk about goals and what people want to achieve while we're here, even though we're working short and a lot of issues are coming into play in our businesses. More and more, we're being asked to do more with less. And so we've got to look at what are our strategies that are effective in helping our team move forward. So as I look at these big things, we always talk about motivation. How do we get people to do things? What is our main motivator? Well, many of us have taken psychology courses, many of us have worked with people, and we realize that most behavior, or I like to say all behavior, is truly goal-directed. We are trying to do something, or we are motivated to do something if we feel like we have a sense of achievement. You know, most people don't wake up every day going, boy, I just can't wait to be average today. Most people wake up with this motivating sense that they want to achieve something. That's why we create to-do lists. That's why we do project management software so we can see what we're achieving. And in your organizations, do you have dashboards? Do you have KPIs? Do you show leaderboards on how people are working through your expectations? People want a sense of achievement. They want to feel as though they're getting better 
1% every day. Another main goal that people have that motivates them to stay in the workplace is the affiliation. You know, a lot of times I ask people, why do you stay? You know, how many of you have conducted state interviews? Most times people will say, you know what? I stay because of the people. I feel connected. I feel appreciated. Gallup does a study that basically says, if you have at least one person in your place of business that you feel understands you, acknowledges you and appreciates you, you're more likely to stay engaged. Again, people don't quit the company, they may quit the boss. And so we've got to ask ourselves, what are we doing to keep people connected and affiliated? More and more people are working remotely. Are we taking time to do check-ins with our teams remotely? Are we taking time just to do a quick fun activity? Are we taking time to really showcase what's working? Affiliation becomes key. The other big motivator for people is what we consider power of self or what we call control. People want to feel as though they have some flexibility in their decision making. You know, more and more people are asking for flexibility, working from home strategies. Am I able to work from home two days a week, three days a week? People are seeing a sense of wanting to have kind of control over their processes, how they're doing things. We, of course, are motivated by being able to have choices, but we also are motivated by this avoidance of punishment. You know, some of us have very strict policies. Those policies are put into play because people want to avoid punishment. And so are we looking at our policies and are we consistent in our policies? Is there favoritism that's happening? That can be a demotivator really quickly. So again, looking at our policies and procedures to say, are these helpful? Are they encouraging? Or are they more of a deterrent for certain behaviors? And looking at love them to lose them, we're also wanting people to feel as though they're making contributions. You know, every day people want to know that they're making or being helping somebody make a difference. What is your mission statement? Are you clear in your mission statement? Because when you're clear in your mission statement and people know why they're there, it helps with goal participation. Let's all join in together and try to focus on what our goal is. I used to work for Disney. Has anybody heard of it? Uh, it's a place, of course, where we're trying to create happiness. Uh, I still remember the mission statement. We create happiness by providing the best of entertainment for people of all ages. I know every day when I was waking up that I was trying to create happiness for people. And having that goal, that major kind of common goal helps us all ask, am I doing right now something that's helping or something that's hurting our company's goal? So helping support and create that goal. And people, again, may have what's called positive dissatisfaction. There's going to be times where you don't like 20% of your job. That's okay. Again, when we look at the idea of what are we doing that is 80% that we love, Maybe what is that 20% that's a struggle for us? And what could we do differently? What would it take to do things differently? And if we have individuals who are giving pushback, asking that question, here's what needs to be done. What's it going to take to get there? Those are key ways to engage people in that process. We also look at ultimately this idea of retention and truly engagement. Are you merely present at work or are you truly engaged and active in what you're doing? Does your team have this engagement? Are you doing engagement surveys? You know, Gallup puts out an engaging survey and then asks individuals to really look at how are we motivating and engaging? And they ask questions like this, you know, does your organization offer opportunities for education and training? Do you feel as though you have some good job related training? You know what you're supposed to be doing. Do you have opportunities to express your views on issues? Or is it more of a shut up and put up? Uh, are you being praised more and more right now because of all the stressors that are happening for individuals in the workplace? People want to feel appreciated. And one of the biggest things that people will say they leave a job for is that they weren't feeling appreciated in some way. And it's not having to have this huge recognition program and putting together a whole system of points. It's more of really looking at 
Thank you for being here. I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. I really liked how you worked with this customer. It's giving some feedback and giving people feedback on what's going well. Sometimes leaders have a tendency to focus too much on what's not working. What are we doing that's working, that's keeping us moving forward? You also see questions like, you know, um, do you feel as though you have a good relationship, a professional relationship with your supervisor? Again, that's a major impact. And as leaders and as supervisors, ask yourself, do you feel like you have an opportunity to connect with your team? Maybe do a 360 on yourself. Maybe you think you're coming across as I'm really open and I'm, I have an open door policy. Other people may have say, oh, she's pretty intimidating. I'm scared to go in and ask her. Knowing again, well, how you're being perceived becomes important in retention. You also want to focus on this idea of right now we've had high rates of turnover. You know, we're talking about what we call this great resignation. Why are people leaving us? Well, we've got to realize that we want to retain people because the cost of bringing in new people to our organizations is quite overwhelming. And we have, of course, loss of productivity, maybe lowered morale because people feel as though they have to pick up on the slack for new people because it takes time for new people to learn. So we really, truly can't afford to lose people. You know, and the Society of Human Resource Management, they really talk about this idea of how much it actually costs. You know, um, are you investing this money into your team? You know, 40,000 a year for a manager, they're saying that it takes 20 to 30% in just recruiting and training expense. So again, I'd rather use that 20 to 30% for retention goals instead of having to look at recruitment goals. And we have to understand why do people stay? Well, they stay if they feel as though they've got potential for career growth. You know, many people want to see themselves climbing the ladder. They want to feel as though they're learning something. They want to have challenges. Many people don't like to do the same thing over and over every day. They want to feel as though they've got some meaning in their work. And they also truly want to feel as though they're making a difference. So focusing on those key pieces become key. And one of the best practices I would encourage teams to do in looking at motivation is just ask people. So many times we assume we know what others need or what they want, and we don't sometimes get it right. Ask them, why do you stay? Do some stay interviews. What do you do to feel valued? How can we keep these lines of communication open? You know, what do you love about your job? What are some things that you see that are important to you? People want a good salary. They want a good working relationship. More and more people are asking for work-life balance. And again, sense of accomplishment. Are you taking time to praise people? You know, again, matching the rewards with the person. I'm not necessarily saying you have to do this major grandiose event, just trying to connect with individuals. Some people just need a simple thank you card. Some people need maybe time where you have lunch with you as a manager and they get a chance to share their ideas. Some people might want you to take something off their plate that they don't like to do and that act of service. Some people just maybe like a little $5 gift or a pop or a soda or whatever to show that, you know, they're being appreciated. Praise them if they need to be praised privately, if they need to be praised publicly, praise them in writing. More and more, again, people want to hear what's working, what's going well, and we've been focusing too much on what's not working. Rotate assignments for people, challenge them, give them opportunities to connect with customers, giving them some type of opportunity to be a part of a pilot project or a focus group. Or if they bring you a problem, I always like to say, what do you see as an opportunity? If you were in my position, what do you see as, as growth? Um, you know, if you're working in the manufacturing department, you know, what are some things that we can do as continuous improvement? How do we value stream? What are we doing to 5S? Again, getting people connected and challenged, but also mentoring people. You know, model that behavior. Am I asking people to do things and am I supporting them? Because people don't do what they're supposed to do if they don't know why they're doing it, they don't know how to do it, or they don't have the right tools to accomplish it. So mentor them. Get in and have some energy, have some excitement to what you're doing teaching people something new and modeling that behavior that you want and encourage, 
notice something, say something, see something, do something. Again, use some humor, provide some training, help them look at potential for future opportunities. There's one um, group that is amazing. They actually have within their HR department, you know, name your job. If you had the perfect job, what would it be? How can we create that within this organization? So realizing that becomes important. The other things we do and love them or lose them is trust people. You know, so much right now, people are worried about trusting each other. Are people doing what they're supposed to be doing? Trying to be truthful. You know, again, people will use things to avoid punishment. If they feel like they're going to be punished and they're, they can't be truthful, they might get into some blame storming. So if you're trying to be truthful and be trustworthy and recognize, you know, hey, I've made a mistake and here's what I'm going to do different next time so it doesn't happen again. When you look at that, you start to focus on kind of feedback. Always ask for feedback on how you're doing. Take your team and do a feedback forum. What do we need to stop doing, start doing, or do differently? Use 360s and create the strategic doing plan. In the next 30 days, what are things that we can continue to do and grow that are going to make us successful? These are key motivators for people. So I briefly, again, highlighted some of these concepts that we're going to look at in December and really focus on this motivation. But I want to stop the share and just check in with you to see what is it that you're bringing to the table and questions that you have, or what are some of your concerns that you're like, hey, Lisa, Lisa, I'm not sure about this. What can I do? So I'll give us a chance to kind of connect and share a little bit in the chat. What are some questions that you have? While you guys are typing your questions, I just want to thank our Facebook Live viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to be ending your live stream here shortly. As a quick reminder, if you register and attend via Zoom, you can stay with us and participate in the Q&A portion. Um, for our Zoom attendees, please feel free to go ahead and start typing those questions away. This is the perfect time. Um, and I just want to remind everyone, if you'd like to bring Lisa in-house or learn more about how to attend her session on uh, in December here, uh, feel free to give us a call, 319-398-5623, or you can email us at corporatetraining at kirkwood.edu. All right. Lisa, Again. one of the questions yes. we received was, can we apply some of these points that you've made to volunteers? Huge. Yes. Um, right now, anybody who's working in the nonprofit, people are saying, man, I'm, I'm trying to keep my volunteers because it's getting harder and harder. Volunteers need to know why they're doing what they're doing, and they have to have some job descriptions. What type of meaning are they bringing to the workplace? You know, um, if I'm volunteering, do people actually have things for me to do? Are you communicating with me? Are you mentoring me? Are you giving me opportunities to showcase, hey, here's how I see things. So everything that I just shared definitely is encouraging for your volunteers. Do you feel like you are involved with the organization? Um, are you bringing and using your strengths? One of the biggest things I see with volunteers is people will volunteer and we don't put them in their strength area, you know, put them in a strength zone that's like, okay, you'd be great here. For example, you know, I work with a nonprofit in the Iowa City area, No Foot Too Small, and I do their emceeing for their events. But please don't ask me to organize that because that is like way outside of my strength zone. And we have a fabulous organizer, Stacy, that coordinates from A to B to C, but I can get in and bring the energy and the excitement. Know your best role for your volunteers. And the best way to find that is to ask them early, engage them early, showcase the different jobs that you have available, mentor them, and again, keep them actively involved where they feel like they're making a difference. So yes, you can totally use this with, with volunteers. I'm passionate about nonprofits. Um, I've worked, of course, with the human services world and nonprofits really have made huge impacts in people's lives. So these same philosophies go right into that nonprofit world. And I know Kylie, you have, I have a lot of nonprofits close to your heart as well, and you have volunteered. Would you attest to the same type of concept? Absolutely. It's, it's easier to be an engaged volunteer when someone just asks. What are you comfortable doing? There's been so many times I volunteered with organizations that I just liked their mission. I didn't really know how I fit in. So them just asking was a great way to get the foot in the door and feel comfortable right off the get. 
Yeah. And engage them early. You know, um, when you get that volunteer, you know, thank them for being here. And then what is your goal for volunteering? What are you hoping to achieve out of it? So that's a great question. So thanks, Joe, for asking that. I appreciate it. Other questions that people may have? Well, Lisa, while we wait for those other questions to come in, I just think it was really telling. One statistic that stood out on your slide to me was only one in four believe they're living up to their creative potential. And the fact that we can combat that by just asking them what they would like to do creatively, that's truly just a mind-blowing statistic. Yeah. And that's why a lot of organizations have incorporated what we call genius hour or 20%. You see a lot of schools doing this as well, where you take 20% um, of time to work on something that you're passionate about. Um, we see this with um, basically working with high potentials and we say, hey, let's put you into a, a pilot project. Uh, we did this with a financial, we called it the shark tank. And so they had once a month meetings with two or three people where they looked at processes and they said, Hey, this is a process we could streamline, or this is a process we could do better, or this is a new product or service we'd like to try. And they kind of created a plan and they pitched it to the senior managers to say, Hey, here's some ideas. And again, some of those ideas were adapted and, uh, People went in and said, wow, you know, I really made a difference in our department by taking some time and really analyzing continuous improvement. It doesn't have to be a continuous improvement position or a department. You can just put, again, some potential individuals together to say, hey, who would like to work on this? Come up with some ideas, pitch it, and see how it goes. So, again, I think that helps in that allowing people some creativity and finding new ways of doing things. I love this. These are not complicated. I think when we think about motivating people, you know, or even just recognition and retention, we, we overcomplicate it. And I love that it's something as easy as just start asking the questions. Yeah. Yeah. And again, with appreciations, a lot of times companies are like, well, we have to do this whole recognition program and dot, 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 dot. No, recognition and appreciation are two different things. Appreciation is just simply, thanks so much, Kylie, for taking time to organize this and put this on today. Um, that's an appreciation. And again, just letting people know that we you make an impact and we do care about you. Because the big, biggest way to motivate, people always ask these three questions. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? And can you help me? And if you can answer those three questions, you're going to retain your staff because people want to feel as though they can trust you and that you can help them and that you truly care about them. So that's awesome. I love this. Thank you so much for your time today, Lisa. It was great to have you here. And again, if anyone would like to attend Lisa's bigger session, email us at corporate training at kirkwood.edu. Um, and just thank you all for being with us here today and feeling comfortable to ask questions and participate in today's webinar. We are so grateful to have you all here. Um, as a quick reminder, we will be emailing out, uh, excuse me, emailing out the recording of today's webinar. And it just takes us a little bit to add closed captioning and get that uploaded. So we'll be looking for that in your inbox soon. We will also post it to all of our social media pages. Please feel free to like, share, um, and tag anyone that you feel like would like to hear this topic. Again, thank you everyone for your time today. We are so glad to share our afternoon with you. Thank you, Lisa. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hope to see you guys December 9th, 8 to noon.